Welcome to Bruisers, a podcast about beer, coffee, booze, and bruisers. I am your host, Rody John, and today we speak to Maddie Levine about being a female reporter in the MMA world, her show Peel Back, and what it's like being married to an MMA fighter. And again, don't forget to check out Peel Back, powered by Fight Bananas, wherever you get your podcast. It's a wonderful podcast uh, that Maddie does. She interviews so many fighters. It is such a good show. Definitely check it out. Uh, while you're out doing that, make sure to sign up for our newsletter. That's right. It is in our show links. Go click the link, put your email in, go put other emails in that you also have so that you can keep getting the newsletter that is all about your favorite podcast. It's all about beer, coffee, booze, and bruisers. So without further ado, here is Maddie Levine. Like to welcome the show, Maddie Levine. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. So you do morning radio for Fun 107. Uh, you're a color commentator for classic uh, entertainment and sports for their boxing and their MMA. You're also an MMA reporter for Fight Bananas, not to mention doing the YouTube show and podcast, uh, Peel Back. What came first, your love for broadcasting or MMA? That's a great question. So I would say my love for broadcasting came a little bit sooner. Um, <laughs> as a kid, I, I always knew I wanted to be in the entertainment field. I just wasn't really sure how. And then thank goodness for a um, job fair at college, and I met a radio station, and I signed on for – the promotions department, and then kind of worked my way over to the studio side and basically was that annoying intern that just kept asking questions and <laughs> kept wanting to learn stuff. And luckily, I had a great mentor there who really taught me the rope. And uh, while I was there, and I had just graduated college, I was 21, I was kind of lost in life a little bit and needed something to uh, fill the void, if you will. Um, and I found a cardio kickboxing spot thanks to a friend who literally dragged me there. And that was my first exposure to martial arts in general, and I completely fell in love with it. I was fighting six months later, and for the past eight years or so, I have just completely fallen in love with the sport, and I managed to find a way to marry my love for broadcasting, my love for martial arts, and just really carve out a unique uh, professional career. It's been it's been really fun. Yeah, I imagine. I mean it I mean you sound extremely busy with everything I just read <laughs> off. So Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a little tired, you know, just a little. <laughs> well, I mean th that's why there's caffeine and uh yeah, totally. sleep whenever you can fit it in. You know. <laughs> well how did you get on with well I guess which came first, the MMA uh reporting or the color commentary, or did one happen and then the other, or how did it all work out? Yeah, so, you know, I, I'm from Rhode Island, smallest state in the country, mm -hmm. so um, <laughs> it's a very tight-knit community. And when I originally first started doing, you know, I was I was working in radio, and then I was trying to, like, cut my teeth with uh, MMA stuff. Luckily, I had a friend in um, the business for CES Boxing, and he put in a good word for me, and basically CES Boxing just really just gave me a shot. And they were like, yeah, like, let's, you know, let's see how it goes. And it was a really cool experience. It was actually an outdoor boxing card um, in oh. Cranston, Rhode Island. And it was probably the hottest day of the century, but it was <laughs> the coolest experience. And that was really my first entry into the world of broadcasting. I was able to commentate. And I think they I think they just trusted me because I know the sport, I do the sport. Um and I I I think it was just like a little bit of a little bit of trust. And thank God I I I did well and they they kept me around and I started doing the MMA side a little more. Um and now primarily I just do the MMA commentary for them. Um but yeah, it, it's been it's been a really fun ride. Oh, I, I mean, I imagine it is. Now, tell us more about your show, Peel Back. 
Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's been such a blast. So Dave Van Auken is the mastermind behind the page Fight Bananas, and he's just – he's a martial arts nerd. Like, he just loves it all, like boxing, uh, bare knuckle, whatever it is. Like, if they're punching and kicking, he's usually into it. Um, and we just – we really connected over that love of of the game, and I started helping out with him – um, or contributing rather to his page probably about a year or so ago. And most recently, just a couple months ago now, he, he really wanted to branch out a little more with the brand. And, uh, he knew what I w- did for a living. He knew what I was capable of. So he was like, let's do a podcast. And I was like, all right, let's, let's do this. I would love to. Um, so we started Peel Back with, Ma- with Maddie Levine and, Really, it's just an open conversation about all things from MMA, Muay Thai, kickboxing. And I've been very fortunate to have some of the coolest guests on the show. Uh, Jillian Robertson was one of um, my personal favorites. I just spoke to uh, a Muay Thai, basically, legend named Stamp Fairtex oh. out of Thailand. And... It's just so inc- – I, I am just so incredibly grateful for the um, trust and opportunity that Dave Van Auken gave me um, to have that platform. So um, it's available on basically anywhere you can get a podcast, um, Spotify, uh, the Fight Banana social pages. So download it now. Go download it. <laughs> <laughs> so how – I guess for those who are just – because, I mean, the the podcast world is so massive now that most people's grandmas have their own podcasts. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to making content and starting out with podcasts, for those that are just starting out, what advice would you give them when it came to getting guests, mm-hmm. making content, bringing people to their pages? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, you know, I – I am fortunate enough where I felt like I had the upper hand a little bit when I jumped into this because I do work in radio and it's something I do every day. So the, um, I guess the character I have behind the microphone just is very authentic for me because it's something I get my reps in, you know? Um, Uh so I think the biggest advice I would give to anybody starting out is to just get those reps in, like get behind the mic and just be you like just let it fly and to be honest like it's probably going to be bad like i remember when i first started i was terrible i was absolutely terrible um but just like anything else in life like you got to get those reps in to like really hone in on your craft and when it comes to getting guests on the show i really think it's all about shooting your shot like don't be nobody is too big for you right like nobody is out of the realm of asking, especially these days with social media. Like, there is no reason that you can't be DMing Dana White because who knows? Maybe maybe you get a, you know, you get a lucky shot and he's bored that day and he says, all right, yeah, sure. Um, so I think the biggest things is shoot your shot, get your reps in, and don't worry about what other people are going to think about it. And that's something that I deal with to this day is I kind of overthink um, my content online or I overthink how people are going to react or respond to it. And there are days where that consumes me and I end up not posting something. So, but those are the people that are going to get stuck and the people that dare to be different and the people that, um, you know, dare to actually put their two cents out there, like you're going to go far. So, you know, dare to be different, uh, get those reps in and, um, oh, I had another good one. Where did it go? <laughs> oh, and and slide in the DM. Shoot your shot. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. I mean, I like so I've only been doing this one since August now, but I've been doing one for the city of Arlington in Texas for four years. So, shooting your shot, without a doubt, is the best advice because mm. you never know. Like you said, you never know who's going to reply, and. Don't just limit it to social media. So if they have a link to their website, go through there. Or if they happen to be through a certain management company, try to slide through there. Like, I mean, especially now that I'm on this side doing, you know, breweries, wrestling, 
MMA fighters, uh, you know, like you said, Muay Thai fighters, BJJ people, like people of all mm-hmm. sorts when it comes to martial arts. There are some people that are very active when it comes to their social media, and then there's some people right. that are – they might leave you on red, but it's not because they don't care, or, you know, they just like whatever. They just are very busy people. So they have yeah, a life yeah. outside of what you are thinking you're seeing. So, um, you know, being consistent and what you might think is – be up to the point to where you think you're annoying, as in, like, being <laughs> consistent and – I've yeah. noticed, well, I mean, this new update, I guess, with the emails where it sends you, like, do you want to follow up? Because you never got a response. I yeah, would just send I it know, all that's, over that's again. That's cool. Right. Yeah. That, that's a cool thing. Because I never thought about it before, and then it just came up, like, oh, this is cool. I didn't know. Yeah. It, it did this now. So, yeah, just I think, resend that email. Right. And I think it's I think it's that fear of rejection that hinders sure. people a lot. And I am certainly a victim that falls to that. And if you want to be great in anything you do, you're going to fail. And I Mm -hmm. think accepting that and accepting that failure is an option but not the end result will certainly help you grow as a person in in any facet of life. But especially if you're trying to start a podcast or you're trying to really get your, like, face out there and stuff, there's no such thing as too much posting. And sure. like the like, if you think about like some of the more you know well known, the first thing I think of is Barstool Sports, right? Or Bar- Barstool in general. I feel like they post every half an hour or like every hour, <laughs> and it's it's just like it's top of mind stuff, you know. And it's like, and I'm sure in the beginning people were like, "All right, shut up!" Like you're you're like we don't need to see this anymore. But there's definitely a method to the madness for sure. It is true. And also, no one's too small and no one's too big. Like, yeah. no matter – again, it's the, it's the getting the reps in, and it's also – you never know who talking to one person can help get you to somebody else because they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, I know, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I-, I would never have put those together. Why would – I guess, why would I? But it's awesome that you can. And, like, you know, after the interview, don't do it in the interview, but do it after the interview. Like, hey – you mentioned that you know blah blah blah. You, mm-hmm. How would how would I approach maybe talk to them or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid to use connections for sure. And in something yeah. like the martial arts world, it's so small. I mean, it's so, it's so popular, but it is a very small world. You know, like mm-hmm. everybody seems to be connected somehow. It's crazy. So yeah. not being afraid to use the resources that you're gaining is a huge thing. Huge. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's such a small world, but, like, you know, when it comes to working out of the gym, yeah, there's a lot of gyms out there, but there's really not a lot that are on that level that have elite fighters coming through there on a regular basis. So Mm. those those elite-level gyms have at least, what do you say, 80, 100 at the small end of it? Like, there's a lot of fighters that roll through there on a regular basis, and a lot of them, depending on where they want to live or where they want to – train with go through different gyms so you know mm-hmm. again just keep using those connections right yeah i mean there have been many times where um i've interviewed somebody you know like american top team for example you, you interview one of those big fighters there's plenty of others that are probably going to see that interview because they're invested in their teammates and the trickle down effect is definitely a, a benefit to something like this the one-time trickle-down effect actually works. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, when it comes to your podcast, what does your research project or your research process look like for that compared to mm-hmm. commentary, to reporting, to, I guess, even your radio show in the morning? Yeah. Oh, man, that's a great question. So the radio show, definitely its own beast. Um, it's a pop yeah. top 40 radio station. And, you know, I do every day this, like, entertainment update segment. So it's really more about pop culture, and we're based in Massachusetts.